Right, slowly. Hey guys, this is Dr. Mobeen. Welcome back. We are talking about immuno immunology. This lecture today is really important. We are talking about immunoglobulin functions. So in our previous lectures, we have talked about immunoglobulin structure. We have talked about genetics, diversity, class switching, affinity maturation, somatic hypermutation, junctional diversity. All those things have been covered. The DNA rearrangements have been covered in the lecture 11. So if you are looking for those topics, please go back to the lecture 11 and listen to that. This topic now will cover the functions of immunoglobulins. And of course, this is very, very important. Um, so let's start. Instead of me trying to tell how important it is, let's start to understand. So what we'll do is today we have a story. The story is that of a Mr. Pathogen who comes into our body and is trying to attack us. This is the same story which we started in the beginning of the immunology lectures. But today we would refine the story to see how the immunoglobulins and how complement works together to start handling the pathogen or start defending against the pathogen. So again remember this, we have acquired arm and we have innate arm. Innate arm is the arm of immunology that engages first. So let's talk about it briefly to understand what is the what happens when a pathogen attacks us. So we'll, we'll have to talk this story into two ways. What happens when the pathogen attacks us for the first time in our life on us? And the second is when that what happens when the same pathogen attacks us again? So enemy came in for the first time and enemy came in the next time. Body's responses are different. The first time, of course, when the first time the enemy comes in, body is surprised. It has just general defenses or the innate arm and it tries to say what the heck is this thing which has come in. But it prepares, it, it uh, understands the enemy, it identifies the enemy. But next time when that enemy comes in, body is more prepared and is rapidly going to be responding. So this is the basic nature of it. So let's talk about it. Let's say this is the body surface. So this is a um, barrier. This could be skin barrier. This could be mucus barrier, whatever barrier through which pathogen has to penetrate. So let's say this surface, let's say this is skin. So let's say this is a skin here. I got a little injury, a little scratch that opened up a little gap in the skin. From this gap came the pathogen in. Remember, this is that pathogen who, who is very happy guy. He is in, he thinks he's gonna have fun in here and he's, he's dancing. Right? So we, we've, we've seen this in the very first lecture. So this is that happy pathogen. It doesn't look very happy, so let's make it slightly more happier. So now this is a really happy pathogen, right? So you say, oh, I mean, this pathogen, let's make one more thing, that let's identify this pathogen, that it has a square on it that is unique to this pathogen. We'll call this an antigen. So let's also say, it has a triangle on it that is also unique to this pathogen. Maybe this is E. coli, maybe this is uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis, maybe this is some other pathogen. So it has these couple of unique things on it. Now the pathogen is in. Why do I put them in here? Because I, every pathogen has something unique which our body has to identify and work with. So I've put two unique things here. One rectangle or a square and the other is a triangle. So now let's see what happens. The very first time the pathogen comes in. So uh, in the immunology, this topic should be treated as primary response and secondary response. But instead of just going for, for the immuno, immunoglobulin primary response, I'm just taking it as a bigger picture that when the pathogen came in, what happened? You are aware of this thing from the previous lectures that neutrophils will come and they'll try to bind with this thing and eat it up and break it up into pieces and move these uh, small antigen pieces out. You are aware of it, I am not repeating it. You are also aware that macrophages will come and they would bind with the pathogen as well and they would try to engulf the pathogen or phagocytose the pathogen and, and break it up. And then you know that macrophages would go to the T helper cells and all that mechanism. I have said it like a million times before. 
the, the discussion today is what is the role of immunoglobulins and what is the role of complement. Again, this lecture is not complement. This lecture is immunoglobulin functions and types. However, it is important to understand the complement as well because that plays a role with the immunoglobulin. So let's see. <coughs> First time when the pathogen came in, there are no immunoglobulins. Why? Because the body does not recognize this pathogen. So immunoglobulin absent, there is nothing. However, innate arm is active and complement system proteins are present. There are about 20 proteins in the complement system. These are manufactured in the liver. They are present in the interstitial tissues. They are present in, in interstitial fluid. These are present in the blood circulating. So uh, you may have heard C1, C2, C3 and so on. So these proteins are present. So the very first thing that happens is that there is a protein called mannose binding lectin or MBL. It is also called mannan binding lectin because it binds to the mannose. What is mannose? Mannose is a sugar present on the surface of the pathogen. Now we are talking about some pathogens in specific here. We are talking about some viruses and we are talking about ca capsulated bacterias that have gotten a sugar coating on top of that. This is funny, our body's immune system has recognized ha or has developed a taste for the bacteria. You know sometimes when you eat some foreign food and you say, well I didn't like it and somebody comes to you and says, well the food is great, you have not developed the taste for it yet. You have not eaten it enough number of times that you started liking it. Same thing here, our body has developed a taste for pathogens. It loves to eat them, it loves to break them. Just like pathogens love to break us, we love to break them. And so our immune system thinks they are candies. So how do we think they are candies? There is mannose in the, on, in the capsule. That capsule is used and we bind to it. So first of all, mannose binding lectin. So let's create that here. Let's say this is a MBL mannose binding lectin it came in here there was some mannose there was some sugar here and it got attached to it mannose binding lectin is a protein that is part of innate arm of immune system so again our immune system does not rec recognize this thing it doesn't know what this thing is it just knows something foreign has come in and so innate arm is active not the acquired arm acquired arm is intelligent it knows it it has identified and it attacks something after profiling it so here, mannose binding lectin binds to this thing. This in turn, in turn would activate the complement. So complement system will become activated. So what happens is the C4 and C2, C2 and C4 proteins are broken up into two pieces, C2 into C2B and C2A, same way C2, uh, C4B and C4A. I am using the convention of the, the fragments of the protein, complement protein here. I am using the same nomenclature that is used by Lange. So Lange Immunology, that book is sitting here, Microbiology and Immunology, they have a very particular way of naming these split fragments. And please understand in immuno, immune world, immunology world, these fragments are named differently. Some people name them in a different way. Here, the naming is, when you break this protein, the larger piece will be called the B and the smaller piece will be called A. That is the actual uh, classification here. So when I say that C4 is broken up and I get C4B, that simply means that the larger piece of C4 and then a C4A means a smaller piece of C4. So C4 got broken up into two pieces, C4A and B, and B is bigger and A is smaller. Similarly, C2 got broken up into C, uh, 4A, uh, C2A four A, C and B, and B is bigger and C, uh, A is smaller. This is called cleavage. So we cleave the proteins, we break the proteins. And of course, the, the mannose binding lectin acts as a scissor or a hammer. So if it was a scissor, 
what is it doing? The scissor is going to cut up the C2 protein. And when it would cut it up, it would create these two components. Similarly, this scissor can cut up C4 and it would create these two components. So you use a scissor, it's an, it's an enzyme. It's a proteolytic enzyme that would break up the C2 and C4. Good? So again, the point is, when the MBL connected with the pathogen, that MBL will become active, there will be conformation change, it would become a cleavage, a cleaving protein or proteolytic protein. When the C2 and C4 comes near it, they will become activated. Now, out of this, remember this in the, in the complement system. Again, I'm not doing complement, so, but remember this thing for our discussion today. In the complement system, the B fragments, the larger fragment, would stay in the play to take care of the pathogen, to kill him. This happy guy, our body wants to kill him. So which fragments would continue working? The B fragments. A fragments would start separating out and they would have other functions. Right? So some of them are anaphylo, uh, some, some of them are uh, chemotactic. For example, C5A is chemotactic for neutrophils. The others are um, anaphylotoxins. You know the an an anaphylactic reaction that is happening due to IgE? Similar reaction can also be done by complement. So complement can also cause allergic reaction, although rare. But angioedema, you know, hereditary angioedema pathology, that is because of the complement uh, uh, allergies. So going back here, I'm going to erase this portion now and just say that the pathogen is in. That pathogen has caused the complement system to be activated and that causes C4A and C4, C2A, so C2B and C4B to become active. These two guys would then work on the C3B, C3B would, uh, C3, C3 would be split into B and A, C3B would then continue doing its other functions. But one part of C3B, one function of C3B is, so when these two guys split C3, so let's say this is C3. Again, what is C3? It's a complement 3 protein. There are about 20 proteins in the complement system. Complement system proteins are produced by liver. These are part of the innate arm of immune system. So when the C3B, so let's say these two guys now become the enzyme that cleave the C3 uh, protein. When C3 is broken up, we get C3B and we get C3A. We talked about it that A would get out and C3B is now the one which is going to act. This C3B would go and get stuck on the, and on the pathogen. So let's get it stuck here. Here. So what is this? This is C3B. So funny thing, not only does our immune system thinks that this pathogen has candies on it, it can actually break up its own little candies and paste them on the pathogen so our cells start eating it. So this is like you bring in something from outside and you put a little sugar and, and fun stuff and you make a cake out of it and you eat it. So this is the process of making the cake out of this pathogen. And so what are we doing? We have attached C3B and that is why now what's going to happen is macrophages have a sweet tooth. Did you know this? Do you have sweet tooth? Do you love sweets? You know, I don't eat sweets, but uh, some people have sweet tooth. My, my older brother, the one who is older to me, he is so fond of sweets that in our home, if ever we would, our mother, Ami, would cook anything sweet, he will be the one who would go at night and eat it all up. And in the morning, we'll be saying, where the heck did the gujarela go? So, this thing, and for the folks who do not know gajrela, gajrela is a kind of a, a, a sweet dessert in our culture. So anyways, so the C3B gets stuck onto the surface and now macrophage have a sweet tooth and they can come and attach here. So macrophage will come and it would be, so if I try to make a macrophage here, this is the macrophage. And so the macrophage will be able to connect here and phagocytose this. This process of creating a way to make the pathogen yummy to be eaten up, to make it easy to be eaten up. Some pathogens are slippery, macrophages cannot eat them. 
So making them easy to be eaten is called opsonizing them. This is called opsonization. Opsonization. So this pathogen has become opsonized and when it became opsonized it knows what's going to happen so now it is not a happy pathogen it is a sad pathogen macrophage is going to come to connect and it has a it has a receptor for C3B it would connect with the pathogen through the C3B and then it would phagocytose it and break it up you know what happens we have covered that in our previous lectures so we'll stop here we'll continue with our process in in one minute thank you